weigh bars versus load cells. As a load or weight is applied to the weight sensor, the metal bends and the strain gauges are stretched or compressed. The gauge's resistive value changes. This alters the current which changes the millivolt signal output. This millivolt signal is converted by the indicator into what you and I see as a weight value, such as pounds, grams, gallons, kilograms, tons, or liters. Weigh bars are manufactured from mild steel and heat treated to near aircraft quality standard. They are stamped with the letter T or the word top to ensure proper installation. Due to the delicate nature of strain gauges used on analog weight sensors, it is recommended that no welding be allowed to the structure near an analog weight sensor. Weigh bars have unique properties that give them a superior performance record. When we look at two 2,500 pound weight sensors, we see the larger mass or size of the weigh bar. This offers resistance to damage caused by lightning strikes. The mass also promotes longevity by reducing metal fatigue and fractures. The failure rate for weigh bars is less than 0.5%. This data was collected over a three year period. Load cell failure rates are commonly between 3 and 6%. Weightronics is an ISO 9001 registered company. It also conforms to the production meets type standards as a device manufacturer for its products. These standards help to ensure the quality of the products. The quality of the sealing is such that weight sensors manufactured by Weightronics are approved by factory mutual research as intrinsically safe for hazardous locations. It likes to have the top and bottom gauges out of balance in the same ratio as they are in the weigh bar. When they are uneven, as in a load cell, a linearity problem can occur. The cells are centered on production equipment using the exact geometric center of the load cell. Because the load center cannot be precisely aligned with the geometric center of the load cell during installation, a built-in eccentricity error exists. Graphically, it looks like this. A represents the applied load and V sub O, the voltage output. Note that the measured output actually curves away from the ideal linear output. The amount of curve is called the nonlinearity error. Typically, this error is 0.03% for load cells. Nonlinearity does not exist in the weigh bar. There are, however, errors that do occur in both load cells and weigh bars. Hysteresis, due to the internal friction of the steel, is one of these errors. When a piece of metal is bent, it doesn't want to go in the direction it is being pushed. And when it is released, it doesn't want to return to its original shape. Again, the ideal looks like this. But when you apply a load, hysteresis bends the ideal. And as the load is removed, a similar effect can be seen. The hysteresis error commonly is 0.01%. The load cell has it. The weigh bar has it. There is a final error, and that is creep. Creep is primarily due to two things. First, the backing on the strain gauge is plastic. And second, the glue that holds the gauge to the steel is also plastic. When a load is applied to a weigh bar or a load cell, it takes a while for the gauges to get where they should be for the applied load. Over a period of time then, as the gauges adjust to where they should be, there is a change in output without an actual increase of applied load. This error is creep, and like hysteresis, is about 0.01%. The total error found in load cells then is 0.05% compared to 0.02% for weigh bars. This 0.05% error can be seen in manufacturing specifications for load cells. You may wonder why this is important. The Bible of the Weighing Industry, Handbook 44, calls for an installation tolerance of 0.05%. This means that at the time of installation, the scale must be accurate to plus or minus 0.05% to be approved for use. On top of that, a 0.05% maintenance tolerance is taken into consideration after the scale has been functioning for some time. 
With the inherent error of the load cell already at 0.05%, there is no room for additional error in the initial installation inspection. Sometimes though, to bring a scale installation into tolerance, the installer will resort to modifying the nonlinearity error by bending it back electrically. The problem with this, however, is that you can compensate for the total error for only one load cell. Weigh bars are protected better than hermetically sealed cells. Weigh bars have three layers of protection. First, a coating of polysulfide covers the gauges and wiring. Second, a polyurethane gel seals everything inside of the outside third layer, which is a metal can, providing physical protection from the outside elements. Weigh bars are easy to install, with little or no downtime. The systems are easy to maintain for years going forward. Weigh bars are just flat out the simplest to use with a proven track record in the marketplace for over 30 years. The single-ended weigh bar, named because it is rigid mounted on one end and the load is applied to the other end. Shear forces transferred in a rectangular shape are distorted. These forces are transferred evenly by the round shape of a weigh bar. With a load applied to the neutral axis of a weigh bar, the even force transfer principle of the round shape makes the weigh bar immune to load shift errors caused by side loads, end loads, or a twisting effect called a torsion load. By having a larger mass than a load cell, the weigh bar tolerates more abuse from shock loads and repeated heavy vibrations. In addition, the ability of the weigh bar to ignore load shifts allows for some unique mounting techniques, such as chain link suspension, which provides more shock absorbing qualities. In some cases, a checking system may be used to minimize structural movement. Double-ended weigh bars are so named because they are mounted semi-rigidly at both ends. This semi-rigid mounting is used where a high-profile tank would catch the wind. The load is applied to the middle of the weight sensor, so no checking is required. The low-profile batching weigh bar is so named because of its lower profile. It is ideal for structures with minimal overhead clearance. Mounting is a snap with the bolt down weigh bar bracket. This weight sensor offers the unique weigh bar design principles that make them virtually immune to load shifts or uneven loads. They have the same freedom of movement that the higher profile chain link version uses for extra shock absorbing characteristics. The stainless steel weigh bar was designed with cleaning in mind. There is no place for material buildup to hide from the steam hose during washdown. We added a protective boot to cover the normal three layers of protection covering the sensitive gauge area. This protects against harsh chemicals used during cleaning processes. This weight sensor also makes full use of the patented weigh bar principles with chain link suspension. There is nothing better offered in the marketplace for harsh environments like the food and chemical industries. There is only one manufacturer of weigh bars. There is only one location where we build them. No one has ever made a replacement that works. No one else can build a weigh bar to the original design specs.